Hi, I'm Daniel and this is Astral. Today I'm off to try and buy a bunch of commercial equipment to set up my own workshop. Sometimes having a YouTube channel has surprising benefits. Now I've got a friend called Limerick Jerry. He's a man who knows a lot of people. Now he knows a man who set up a workshop with some state of the art equipment. And after not too long and hardly using the equipment, they no longer need it. So Jerry said, I know a man who could do with that equipment. 200 mile an hour Dan, which refers to the speed I generally move at, not how fast I drive. Time is of the essence and against us because all the equipment needs to be gone ASAP. I tried to bid and say I just want a few bits of kit, but the owner turned around and said, no, Daniel, take all of it or take none of it. So I've come down here with my roll on, roll off, first thing in the morning to look at what they've got, try and negotiate, and if we're taking it, it's going on this lorry straight away. I want to create our own Asheville workshop so we can do all our maintenance in-house and this kit would be absolutely perfect. If I went to buy this, it would cost me an absolute fortune. So I've come down here to try and find myself a deal. Right, so here are the hydraulic lifts. These are 25 foot long. These are the ramps to get onto it. Those are where the cables run to lift it. And over here are all the posts. When we finally build our own workshop, I should be able to put a lorry up on the ramp. I should be able to take gearboxes out. I should be able to take engines out. We should be able to do it in-house and we should be able to do it safely. But I'm gonna be honest, a lot of this kit, I've only seen it in other people's workshops. Like I've seen this in the Scania workshop. I reckon these lifts, they must be about 30K. Right, here we got a three-phase compressor. This will be um, fixed in a workshop. This thing is extremely powerful. You can plug all your airlines, air guns, everything can be connected into this. Gee, I can't even matter what, that's eight, nine K. As part of setting up this workshop, all this armored cable is running around. Now this armored cable is of a value of around 5,000 pounds. You know what? I'm gonna strip the cable off the wall as well. I would normally say everything that ain't bolted down is coming with me, but in this case, if it's bolted down, it's still coming with me. Probably the equipment in here with the setup, with the time, with the labor, because the specialist has got to set this up. This workshop probably costs about 70K to set up and I'm coming to get it for a fraction of that. Right, Limerick Jerry said his mate is going to do me a good deal. I reckon we just get it all on the lorry and hopefully we can work it out later. All right, we've got a plan for this. What we're going to do, we're going to lift up one of these ramps, we're going to reverse the flatbed in and then we're going to put it on top of it. Straighten up. What? We're trying to minimize the overhang, so we're trying to get it touching up the front because we don't want it to hang over. The flatbed's 20 foot, but that's 25 foot. So we'll have five foot hanging over there and we'll tie a high vis onto it or something. But we want to make sure that what's hanging off isn't dangerous and is legal and compliant to be on the road. I haven't even negotiated the price yet, but I'm having a look at the kit. This kit is fantastic. I know the man's going to look after me. Um, I can see in this workshop, this is a proper setup of a reputable company and I'm getting a bit gassed and excited all now I don't even know if I'm going to be buying it but boy oh yeah <laughs> Laurie's going to drive out try and turn around this is where that rear steer comes so in handy Now we're going back into the workshop and we're going back in cab first to try and get uh, the other side on. Hopefully there'll be a gap in the middle and we can put the post here. It's definitely going to be a tight squeeze. By the time we um, tie a high vis on this side and the other side, we should be all right because there's only five foot overhanging. Uh, but, oh, he's lifting it. Oh, sorry, back. Okay, you need to go. We're right here. Now we're trying to reverse to make sure we can get it as, as close as possible. Oh! Okay, I think we've got it as close as we can. We can reverse a little bit more and we can get that bit closer. That bit closer to the front is that bit less overhang. Let's reverse up a bit. Ah! We're just putting it on a bit of timber. When we put it on a bit of timber, when we go to lift it off, life won't be easy, but it will be easier than trying to lift it if it's laying flat on the flatbed.
you're going to go forward, yeah? So you're going to go forward, get out the way, we'll lift something, then you'll come back. So you're going to go forward, back, forward, back. This is one of the two cross beams for the four post lift. It sits inside the two posts and the two platforms sit on top of that. Yeah, what happens with that? It has mechanical parts, so the forklift operator needs to use tackers to lay it down gently. Now, I've heard three of these can sit down, but the one at the back here, what's got all the oil in it, that has to stand up so the oil doesn't spill out. We're just going to get some straps now, and uh, we're gonna see if we can get this one on. This is the one that cannot lay flat. We're gonna strap it to that, it's gotta go there. Are you fully extended? <laughs> We don't have the clearance here, so we're going to use the air suspension and drop the lorry. <laughs> okay, we're round. Look at that. <laughs> we managed to get it in by millimetres. We just got the clearance, and now we put it flat on the flat. But yes, it's in. So the rest of these, we can actually just lay them flat on the forklift. <laughs> Because we can set all of these down, we're going to put all three on at the same time and we're going to put them flat. Playing a bit of Tetris here, we're going to move the lorry forward. Um, we want to get the compressor on, but we want the compressor to be flat in the middle. Uh, so we're going to take these legs and we're going to put them at the end here and we're going to try to strap them down. So there's two things here. We have to strap those down to this and then strap this down to the flatbed. <laughs> We're trying to get that overlap on it here. And just to be clear, yeah, I'm not a scrap hoarder and I'm not buying these to try and sell them for profit. This is the next step again in our business to, to bring all this maintenance in-house. And it's a fabulous opportunity, but at the same time, I don't know the exact circumstances, but anyone who puts a workshop together this good and then has to take it apart this quickly without barely using it, there's obviously been a problem. I don't want to intrude and the company don't want to be mentioned, but I do want to make sure that they also get a fair price because I know what it's like to be on the receiving end of something like this. Here we go, put a couple of straps together. Um, we've interlocked them and we can get above the filter. We don't want to cause any damage there. And we're going to try and get this on behind the post what's standing up. Everything must go, we want this trolley as well. So we'll take this trolley too, and these are what's gonna go on the ramp, and these are what are gonna lift the axles up. <laughs> Everything must go, boy, and that ain't staying here, I'm telling you. Should I bring my van in and take the bits off of my van? Or... What, there's more in the van? I've got, yeah, look. You got more in the van, yeah? Yeah, bring the van, bring the van, bring the van. There's more in the van! We've got a box of fittings here, and I could tell there was a few fittings missing because on the bits which are on top of the trolley, this little area with different shapes on it, and these are the fittings that fit into those different shapes. This is not something we can set up in-house. We have to get a specialist company. I'll probably ask for the contact who set it up here in the first place, and they'll need to come to the yard and do it. I'm not going to lie, for a little while, these might sit in the yard collecting dust, like the turnstile and the skip boat I made and the Asheville gym. But it doesn't matter, because it's mine and I own it, and when I do go to set it up, I would have saved a whole lot of money. Oh, this is the gear, uh, hydraulic gearbox jack, yeah? And yeah. um, we got more at the back. Oh, wow, and what's that, the hydraulic greaser? Yeah, and a big jack. And a big jack. Uh, all right, put it down. All right, Woo! look at that. Is this me as well, here? This? No. <laughs> it's not me, but I do try to take it as well. Wow, look at that. Yeah, yeah. Right. Nice. Greasing will forever change your Asheville. Ah. For a minute there, the trolley weren't part of the deal, but now the, but now the trolley is. Now we're going to drop it in the gap there, which will build up and hopefully make it flat. And then we're going to try and put the um, greaser on, or maybe the gearbox jack. Okay. 
lift them out the trolley so we can secure it in place and then the trolley's light we can stick it in the back of the van nice Final bits. This is for the lift. I don't know exactly what it does. I think this is something to do with the safety. When you, uh, when the lift is in place, I think this locks it in. The fellas who work here are actually starting to arrive and their workshop's nearly been completely empty. They're coming in like, what's going on? This is the last bit of kit that's gonna go on. Um, I wanted to take all the electrical cable, what I told you earlier, but because the office have got here, we're going to have to cut off their electricity. They're not going to have any internet, not going to be able to use their computer, so we're going to have to come back and try and take the cable. But I am going to come back and get the cable. That's it. We've got all the kit on. On closer inspection, um, I think this kit is worth about 50k. I spoke to the owner, we went back and forth, there was a bit of a negotiation, and we have agreed that we will pay 25% of that figure, which I'm really happy with. A great deal for us, and he doesn't have to mess around with tire kickers and people going back and forth and taking some of the kit and not others because they want space in the workshop because their business activity is changing. Fantastic for us because as a business, we're always trying to improve. And this is one step closer to controlling our destiny because when we have our own workshop, we don't have to worry about other workshops delaying us, not getting parts so we can try and move forward as efficiently as possible i'm very happy the next step is that i need to build an Asheville workshop i want a double workshop uh, with double uh, five meter by seven meter wide doors this kit will go inside we'll bring a specialist in to set it up thanks for watching if anybody's got any good deals coming up please let us know we love a deal however let me be clear we are not salvage hunters drives off. We don't need click keys. The truck's driving off, isn't it? That's the, that's the shot. Yeah, I think that's all right, yeah. Yeah? yeah it's, so. a different, it's different, isn't it? Yeah. It's a standalone video.